Every night I check under my son's bed for monsters, but the night I found him hiding there, pleading for me to save him from the thing sleeping in his place, I realized the real nightmare had just begun. I've always thought bedtime was a sacred ritual, a time for bonding, for quiet moments, for assuring your child that there are no monsters, no ghosts, just safety and love. Tonight, though, something changed, something that will forever haunt me. It was just like any other night. I was tucking my son, Ben, into bed. He's six years old, and ever since he could speak, he's always asked me the same question before I turn off the lights. Daddy, check for monsters under my bed. It had become part of our nightly routine, a little game of pretend. I would get down on my knees, pretend to be scared, and then declare his room monster-free. But tonight, there was something different in his voice, something urgent. Daddy, please, he whispered, his voice trembling slightly. Check for monsters under my bed. I sighed softly, smiling at him. Okay, buddy, one more time. I knelt down on the floor, lifting the edge of his blanket to peek under the bed. But what I saw made my blood run cold. There, under the bed, was my son, another Ben. He was staring back at me, eyes wide with fear, his body shaking. His voice was barely a whisper, but I could hear him clearly. Daddy, he quivered tears streaming down his face. There's somebody on my bed. I froze, my mind struggling to comprehend what I was seeing. I glanced back up at the bed. Ben was lying there, just as I had tucked him in, looking at me with those same wide eyes. But how could he be in two places at once? I looked back under the bed and the Ben beneath stared at me, his face pale, his lips quivering. Please, Daddy, he pleaded softly. Don't let them get me. I felt a cold sweat break out on my forehead. I didn't know what to do, which one to believe. My hands shook as I slowly pulled back from the edge of the bed. It's okay, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. Everything's going to be okay. But it wasn't. I knew it wasn't. I could feel it in the air, a heaviness, a presence that shouldn't be there. I stood up slowly, my eyes darting between the two bends, one above, one below. They were identical, down to the last detail, but the fear in the eyes of the one below, it was so real, so raw. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. Ben, I said, addressing the one on the bed, is everything okay? He nodded, but there was something off about his smile. It was too slow, too deliberate. Yes, daddy, he said softly, everything is fine. But the Ben under the bed started crying harder, his small hands reaching out towards me. Daddy, please, don't leave me. I felt a jolt of panic shoot through me. My instincts screamed at me to grab him, to pull him out, to protect him. But something held me back, something cold and heavy like a lead weight in my stomach. What if... What if he wasn't the real one? What if pulling him out made things worse? I glanced back at the Ben on the bed, his eyes now gleaming in the dim light. Come on, Daddy, he said softly, his voice smooth, almost too calm. Get back up, it's late, let's go to sleep. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. I didn't know what to do. I was stuck, paralyzed by fear and uncertainty. Daddy, the Ben under the bed sobbed, please. Please don't let them take me. I'm so scared. I couldn't think. I couldn't breathe. My hands moved on their own, reaching for the boy beneath the bed. As my fingers touched his, they were ice cold, and he gripped them tightly, desperately. Daddy, no. The Ben on the bed shouted suddenly, his voice filled with something dark and angry. Don't listen to him. I felt a sharp pain in my chest, a crushing weight as if something invisible had slammed into me. I yanked the boy from under the bed, pulling him out with all my strength. As I did, the room seemed to tilt, the shadows stretching and twisting. There was a scream, high-pitched and inhuman, from the bed on the bed, his face contorted eyes glowing with a malevolent light. And then, 
In a blink, he was gone. The room fell silent. I held my son, the real Ben, close to my chest, feeling his heart hammering against mine. He was crying softly, clinging to me as if he would never let go. Daddy, he whispered, thank you. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. I sat there on the floor, holding my son, watching the shadows dance on the walls, waiting, waiting for whatever it was to come back. Because deep down, I knew this wasn't over. And every night since, I still check under his bed. But now I'm no longer looking for monsters. I'm looking for my son. And I pray that one day I don't find him still hiding there, terrified, begging me to save him again. When I was around six years old, something happened that I still can't explain. It was just an ordinary afternoon like any other. I was in my bedroom playing with my favorite dolls. The sun was starting to set, casting a warm glow through the curtains. Everything felt safe and normal. I was deeply engrossed in my game when I heard my mother's voice calling from downstairs. Lily, can you come here for a minute? Her voice sounded like it was coming from the kitchen. I didn't think twice. I hopped up from the floor, leaving my dolls behind, and ran out of my room. As I reached the top of the stairs, I could hear her moving about in the kitchen, pots clanking and water running. I started down the steps, my small feet tapping softly on the wooden stairs. But when I was about halfway down, I heard it again. Lily, come here, please. But this time, the voice came from behind me upstairs. I froze, clutching the banister. My heart skipped a beat. I slowly turned my head, and there at the top of the stairs was my mother. She looked exactly like she always did, hair pulled back in a loose ponytail, wearing the faded blue sweater she loved. Her face was calm, but there was something in her eyes, a flicker of concern. Come here, sweetie, she said gently, extending her hand towards me. A wave of confusion hit me. I had just heard her calling from the kitchen. My eyes darted back down the stairs, and to my horror, there was another figure, a mirror image of my mother standing at the bottom. This one wore the same soft smile, her voice calm and soothing. Come down, darling. I need your help. I was trapped in the middle of the staircase, my mind racing. Which one was my real mother? The one at the top seemed worried, her eyes locked onto mine as if urging me to come closer. But the one at the bottom of the stairs seemed just as genuine, just as motherly. Lily, the mother at the top of the stairs said again, her voice steady but tinged with urgency. It's important that you come to me right now. The mother at the bottom of the stairs smiled warmly. Come to me, sweetheart, she called, her tone light and inviting. But there was an undertone, something I couldn't quite place. Too smooth, too deliberate. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. My heart pounded in my chest. I didn't know which one to trust. I took a shaky step back up, then hesitated. The mother at the top of the stairs seemed to relax slightly, her hand still outstretched. Lily, please, she whispered, her voice softer now, almost a plea. I glanced back down, and the mother figure at the bottom took a step forward, her smile fading, replaced by a look that seemed wrong. For a split second, her face seemed to shift, like it was struggling to hold its form, and then it was back. The smile too wide, her eyes too bright. I knew then. I felt it deep in my bones. I turned and bolted up the stairs, racing towards the mother at the top. As I reached her, she pulled me close, her arms wrapping around me tightly. I could hear her heart pounding against my ear, or maybe it was mine. I couldn't tell. We stood there, holding each other, and I didn't dare look back. I could feel her breath, warm and shaky against my hair. It's okay, sweetie, she whispered. You're safe now. Mommy, I asked, my voice trembling. Who was that downstairs? Her grip on me tightened for just a moment before she spoke. I don't know, Lily, she said softly, but it's gone now. Let's go back to your room. I could hear a slight quiver in her voice, something I'd never heard before. She led me back to my room and tucked me into bed. I watched her carefully, waiting for an explanation. 
for some kind of reassurance, but she just sat by my side, stroking my hair, humming softly. Mommy, I whispered again, my eyes searching hers. Are you really my mommy? She paused for a moment, then smiled, a gentle but tired smile. Of course I am, sweetie, she said. Now get some rest. She stayed with me until I fell asleep, but even as my eyes grew heavy, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Was the mother sitting beside me the real one, or had I made a terrible mistake? The next morning everything seemed normal. My mother was in the kitchen, making breakfast just like always. I wanted to ask her about what happened, but I was too scared of the answer. A month later we moved out of that house. My parents never explained why, but I always felt it had something to do with that night. Maybe my mother had seen something too, or maybe she was afraid of what I'd seen. I didn't dare ask. To this day, I still don't know what I saw on those stairs or who, or what, was waiting at the bottom and sometimes late at night I wonder if I chose correctly. Because sometimes when I'm alone in the dark I can still hear that voice calling from somewhere in the house and it sounds so much like my mother. Thanks for diving into the shadows with us. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more spine-chilling tales. Stay curious, stay safe, and remember, sometimes the truth is scarier than fiction. Until next time, sleep tight if you can.